Hello friends, this is Dr. Imran Surti. I welcome you all to the Innovation Center of Sheikh Pitti Mahira College of Arts and Home Science managed by Vanita Vishra. Today we are going to deal with one of the most anthologized and the most celebrated critical essay of 20th century literary criticism, namely Tradition and the Individual Talent by one of the most celebrated poets of 20th century, Thomas Stearns Eliot. One can see the famous statement made by T.S. Eliot. I am an Anglo-Catholic in religion, a classicist in literature, and a royalist in politics. Yes, this statement defines the man, the essayist, the poet, the publisher, and the critical social literary critic. T.S. Eliot has written many, many seminal, seminal essays and seminal works, which includes some of his best poems ever written, some of the best you know, critical essays ever made. One can very well see he was also awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1948 for doing and giving a lot of pioneering contribution to English literary criticism. I have tried to give you a list of you know, seminal literary works you know, written by T.S. Eliot. The poems like The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, The Wasteland, The Hollow Man, Ash Wednesday, Murder in the Cathedral, which is one of the most famous poetic dramas ever written by T.S. Eliot, Four Quartets and The Cocktail Party. We also have a list of major seminal essays, critical essays written by T.S. Eliot. The one which has, which has been a path-breaking you know, seminal essay in 20th century criticism is Tradition and the Individual Talent. The function of criticism which defines the function of critics and what the criticism should do. Hamlet and his problems which is more or less a psychoanalytical explanation of the problems you know, suffered by Hamlet. The Metaphysical Poets, a genuine admiration and appreciation of great metaphysical poets like George Herbert, Andrew Marvel, John Donne, etc. Poetry and Drama, the possibility of a poetic drama. So it is quite natural that a man like T.S. Eliot was dealing with a literary tradition. He, his was a mind which was quite confident, cultured and comfortable as far as the entire literary tradition from ancient as well as modern times is concerned. Moving on, let us talk pre you know, precisely about the essay in concern that is tradition in the individual talent. The basic premise of this essay you know, uh, deals with the connection between past and present. So if you talk about tradition and the individual talent, the entire essay is divided into three parts. The first part deals with the conceptualization of tradition by T.S. Eliot. Second part deals with the theory of impersonality. And the third part summarizes his critical statements. So one may ask this question, what is the theoretical basis of this particular essay, tradition and the individual talent? Then one may rightly say, the theoretical basis for making a connection between contemporary and past poetry is formulated in this particular essay, tradition and the individual talent. What makes this connection possible? That is between past and present. Then Inlet has an answer for that. And precisely the answer is historical sense. Now what is historical sense? Before you go to historical sense, one has to understand this point. The main dynamics, the main dynamics of Anglo-American criticism and the subsequent new criticism as well as Chicago criticism lies in the, in the, in the essence that there is, a, there is an absolute pursuit of objectivity in all the critical works. Moving on, when we talk about uh, tradition and the individual talent, the first term that he makes use of is the, is the term traditional. When we talk about the word traditional, it is normally used as a term of negativity, as a term of derog in, a, in a derogatory sense, as a word of censure. He exemplifies the same by giving you know, certain uh, illustrations. So he says that when we talk about nations, when you talk about cultures, normally our focus is primarily on the creative genius and lesser on the critical genius. 
So hardly we are aware about the critical mind that are available in a particular nation or in any culture. And there comes the most famous statement by T.S. Eliot. The more traditional a writer is, the more individual talent he has. And the more individual talent he has, the more traditional a writer is. And in order to make this possible, in order to make this possible, one needs to have a sense of historicity, a sense of historical sense. Uh, in the words of F.R. Lewis, it is only from the present, out of the present, in the present, that you can approach the literature of the past. To put it another way, it is only in the present that the past lives. This is the connection between the timeless and the temporal, between the traditional and the contemporaneity, between historical sense and our own times. Moving on, in the words of T.S. Eliot, what is historical sense? So it is a sense of timeless as well as of the temporal and of the timeless and temporal together is what makes a writer traditional. And it is one at the same time what makes a writer most acutely conscious of his place in time of his own contemporaneity. So say for example, in 2019, if I wish to write a, you know, a tragedy, so in order to write a tragedy, I have to have a historical sense of the entire tradition of you know, tragic form. I cannot simply be an individual writer and you know, start writing in the way I feel like. I have to develop uh, a historical sense which gives me a very clear cut formulated idea of what a tragedy means. So Elliot's idea of tradition is closely related to the emphasis on the idea of whole. Now in order to understand this concept, we also need to understand what Samuel Coleridge, you know, Taylor Coleridge wrote about organic unity. So what is organic unity? It is the connection between the parts and the whole. If you talk about T.S. Eliot, he very clearly states that tradition comes first and the individual talent comes later. So it is the whole which comes into existence first and then the parts are added to it. In order to explain this better, he has also given you know, another example. Coleridge talks about the development of and the growth of a tree, at the same time the development and growth of a machine. Say for example, when we talk about a car, the production of car takes place in different units. You know, different parts of the car are made in different ways. And then they are finally you know, brought to the assembling point where all the parts are brought together and finally the car is made. However, the parts have their own importance and the whole is also important at the same time. But when we talk about the growth of a tree, it does not take place in the same manner as it does with the machine. The, the roots, the, the branches, the stems, the flowers, the fruits, the trunk, everything is beautifully interconnected. There is no point in a tree that we can you know, separate that here the branch starts and here the flower ends. So everything is interconnected. That is how Coleridge has uh, enunciated or visualized organic unity. And that's how the entire literary tradition exists as far as you know, T.S. Eliot is concerned. Moving on, one of the most famous statements you know, that comes in the first part of the tradition is this. The existing monuments form an ideal order among themselves, which is modified by the introduction of the new, the really new work of art among them. The existing order is complete before the new work arrives. For order to persist after the supervention of novelty, the whole existing order must be, if ever so slightly altered, and so the relations, proportions, value of each work of art toward the whole are readjusted. And this is conformity between the old and the new. The past should be altered by the present as much as the present is di directed by the past. So the whole entire tradition of literary work of art exists. Now an individual writer is added to that particular tradition which already exists. When the new writer is added to that tradition, that ideal order has to readjust. There is a lot of readjustment that takes place within this ideal order which already existed before the coming or the arrival of the new writer. So now the relationship will change. The proportions will change, the size will change as far as the ideal order is concerned. And that's where the individual talent is accommodated in the existing ideal order of literary tradition. That's how you know T.S. Eliot has conceptualized the entire idea of tradition. So summarizing, I would like to say the interaction between the present and the past forms the very foundation of Eliot's theory of tradition. So, 
still there is an interaction going on a subtle dialogue which takes place you know between the past and the present and it is in the present that one experiences the past that's how Eliot you know formulated this entire theory of uh, tradition Eliot advocates a subtle interaction between tradition and the individual talent between the past and the present between historicity and contemporaneity so I hope and believe that you must have you know like this video uh, next time we'll definitely deal with the second part of TSE let's essay tradition in the individual talent that is theory of impersonality. Thank you for now.